All right, so here's the next video. Uh, we're going to use some planes that we've already set up to start 3D modeling uh, this pretty simple building. Um, let's, let's begin, ordinarily we would have a plan down here as well, but that's all right that we don't for now because we can do a lot of modeling just from here. I think I'm gonna start from the east side, which means I'm gonna turn that, that west, which I really do wanna make sure this gets stuck. And, and titled as West. It's kind of a strange thing. Um, so I'm going to turn that West one off and just concentrate on this East image here. And as I zoom in, you can see that you get the location of um, even some idea of that these are, are cinder blocks down here, um, that this is representing stone foundations here. This is pretty cool. Um, if I just hit left, you're going to see this perfectly in orthographic view. Um, again, if I hold down shift and middle mouse button, you can change your view a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to leave that right there. Um, I'm also going to get rid of that construction plane just to get rid of it. Okay, so let's begin with a sketch. Everything in Fusion 360 is going to begin this way, so let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to hit create sketch, and it's going to ask me what plane do you want to be sketching on. Um, you know, in the back here, which would be this image, I'm going to choose this, this one right here and it'll light up blue when you selected it. Okay. So instead of from the right side, I'm gonna look at this from the left. There we go, that's a little better. And I'm only gonna do this one for now. So we'll do one piece at a time. Um, this is as simple because it's already scaled. This is as simple as, as going ahead and, and doing, your, um, doing your tracing work. Okay, so um, I can begin, I'm going to pretend that these are, are a little bit more square than that, um, just to make it sort of a lower polygon option. So I'm going to start with this foundation right here, just create a, a two-point rectangle, I'll give myself a little space here, um, and that's one object, okay? This is one sketch, everything in this sketch that I'm going to call the same Let's say that, you know, beginning from the same plane, I'll put there. Okay. All right, just a few pieces here. Okay, I think this is in a different plane than those other ones, so I'll just drop this one in here. Okay, those will be... Those will be separate bodies, um, so 3D, 3D pieces um, a little later. Um, I'm going to really quickly zoom down here. Make sure that my, my house sort of begins right at the top of the foundation. You can see just by hovering over here, I'll zoom way in, uh, hovering, over, hovering over that corner and then coming out, you see you get that nice little green line. Um, so I'm just going to do a two-point rectangle, super simple, and just block this off. All right, is it, it's just as simple as that, okay? And I can see already that there's something going on where either they did this deliberately or it's an accident of the scan. Um, really, really common. I wanna make sure that I let you all know that this is perfectly normal. Um, it could be that the scan was like slightly skewed just a little bit, and it's gonna be up to you to determine how you want to interpret that. Um, I'm gonna pull this object up and just to make sure that it sits in the right place, there's a technique here where you can do, um, you can actually move uh, an object just by clicking on a line and then moving it. So what I want to do is move it until it's, you know, up and then this value to another object. So I can do this by just kind of dragging it, but it's not going to really snap as easily um, because as you zoom in, you can see that there's there's going to be a gap, and that that just drives me crazy. Um, so what I'll do is um, I'm just going to move it. Um, point to position. So I'm going to go from here. And to there. Sorry, I had it off. Um, I'm really looking for, instead of point to position, point to point. So I just want this line to line up with where this point is in the same uh, value as it vertically as this other one. So I'll click the line first, okay? OK, 
Okay, so one selected object, I'll say this is the thing I want to move. Um, my origin point will be here. My target point will be there. And that's going to move it so that this is in exactly the right place. Okay, that's just a quick technique. Um, there are other ways to do that. Um, so let me control Z and undo that. Um, this is, I wanted to show you all this anyway, which is uh, a way to use constraints. Up here, you can uh, constrain something. So let's say you accidentally grab a thing like this and, oh, I don't know, like you misrepresent it, kind of something like this. I don't know. Um, and you want to move this back up as I did before. There are lots of constraints up here. Um, one of them that, that I really like is collinear. So I'm going to select that object, hit collinear, and then select this other line, and that will move the line down to it. You can also kind of reverse that. I'm going to select this one and go to collinear with that, and that's going to move it up. Okay, so that, those are just really, really basic um, constraints. You can say, um, so let's say I accidentally draw a line that I want to be vertical, but I accidentally made it so that one of the lines was a little off, right? Okay, so this is just a really wonky uh, rectangle. Um, you can see this constraint symbol right here is saying that this is horizontal, and, and this one is saying that these two are parallel. parallel. So that means that both of these are horizontal as well, but this is definitely not vertical. So I'm going to select this one and say, I want this to be, if it's closest to, to vertical, it'll move to vertical. If it's close to, closer to horizontal, it'll go to horizontal. So I'll just select that button and it'll square it up. I'll select this one and square that up, okay? Another thing for that second one that I just did is um, I could select this one and, and instead of saying I want it to be always vertical, I'll say, oh, I just want it to always be parallel with this one, which does, of course, the same thing. Okay. The other thing is the selection tool. If you accidentally create something you don't like, just go ahead and hit delete. Okay, so that's some basic sketching. Um, I'm going to finish this off very quickly. I'm only going to do, for this tutorial, I'm only going to do this one piece um, right here just to make this not too long. Um, I'm going to continue. This is a, a useful tool. Just the line tool is probably the most common. Um, I'm going to go, so I know that this piece right here, when I hold down shift and kind of rotate around, I know that this is an overhang, okay? So I don't want uh, this to necessarily be, um, this piece to be on the same plane. Okay, so that's okay though. Um, I'm just gonna hit left view here again. I'm just gonna go up underneath it. So I'm gonna go one, stay vertical, right? You can see this little um, symbol here that says that it's perpendicular to that other line. I'm gonna go to here and just finish off that roof structure just on the underside. And this is really helpful. You may not notice this, but it's going from the center line. It's, it's just interpreting that. It's guessing that that's what we want to do. And it's giving us a nice guide, which I just love. Um, I'll complete that. And I'll just use other lines to just sort of zoom out until I get this about what I want it to be. And that'll have to be it. Okay, I want if I wanted to, I could cut that off and I could, you know, I could correct this a little bit, but I'm, it's going to be okay for, with me. Um, let's say after the fact, um, I want both of these eaves to be the same size. I can select this one and then go to equal and make it equal with that one. Okay, and that shortens that up just a little bit. So these are going to be the same size. Um, another thing you can do is, is use the trim tool. So I know that all of these are going to be the same plane. Um, so that's going to be okay for me to uh, just trim this out. Here's the trim tool. I'm just going to cut this little piece out so that when I s hover over here, I can just get all of this as one object. Okay, that's really nice and clean. Um, I think it's probably fine for me to, to even imagine doing the windows as well. Um, so I'll do that. Okay, from here, I'm going to zoom in just to get my grid to be a little bit. So I'm snapping to the grid, just as you know here. Um, I'm just going to zoom in to get that a little bit more precise. Okay, that'll be a location for part of that window. I'll do, since there's a frame here, I'll do another piece. 
with just these window mullions here. And I'll just finish that off with one more. Okay, so that's those individual pieces. We have the, the materials that we need. Um, I'm also going to create Okay, let's do this as a as a a way of learning a, a new tool. I'm going to create one pane right here. Um, and I can either do like an array of those, like uh, I could select this one and say create rectangular pattern. It's known as a pattern in this tool, I forgot. Um, my number is three. Okay, so I'm going to just pull these out. Okay, so that's that's going to be my distance. And I don't want to do that because you can see this pane is bigger than these two. Um, but that's how you would create many objects of the same thing, just kind of set your distance you know, between them. I'm going to hit cancel on that. That's, this is not the place to, to, to do that. Um, let me just create a couple more of these. Okay, and these are going to be the panes. Um, I do not like that that's slightly off, so I'm going to say that this needs to be collinear with this one. Okay, and we can edit them all later. I'll just do one more. Now, we don't know whether or not the person who created this original drawing, um, you know, this is within the thickness of a pencil line, so we don't really know that these really were measured as being different sizes. Um, it could be just a, you know, sort of by the hand kind of thing, um, but that's all right. Um, what I'm going to do is create um, right here at the midpoint. Um, let's do right here at the midpoint. I'm going to draw a line all the way through here. Okay, and that's that is going to be what we're going to call a construction line. Okay, so I'm going to hit X on that, so it's not really doing anything. We're going to use that to mirror from. So I'll do the same thing um, through here as well. Not sure I love the way that this is looking, um, so I'm not going to use the center point this time. Okay, because it looks to me, I'm going to hit X on that one. This one needs to be vertical. Okay, so it's already vertical. That's good. Um, so I've created a few guidelines. This is a simple way to work. Um, I've got a line down here that I can mirror off of, and I've got another image up here. So let me just finish one pane. And the trick with this is, if you're willing to agree to making these all identical, it can save you some work. So I'm just going to do a couple quick panes here. Okay, and again, if things aren't lining up, I can always make them collinear. Okay, I'm going to select this one linear with that one. Um, this one, same deal. Just keep selecting each of these so that they just line up a little better. We just don't really want all this, you know, that much variation in these. Made an error there, so go back to collinear. This one needs to be collinear with that one. Okay, these look okay at the top, and these look okay. Okay, so these are pretty clean. Um, I'm going to double click and select each of those panes. Okay, and I'm going to use the mirror tool. Okay, we can see it right here mirror. And it's saying, which line do you want to mirror off of? 
I'm going to mirror off of the bottom one first and just see how that looks. Hit OK. Looks all right. Okay, It's not exact, but it doesn't look bad. Okay, So from there, I think I'm going to select, double click, um, hold down Shift, and double click each of these panes quickly. And then we'll do another mirror. and see how it looks. If we need to, we might need to move this line so that it, it fits a little better, but let's see what happens. I'm going to hit mirror, select the mirror line. It looks like it pushed everything off a little bit to the left, um, so I'm going to hit cancel. Let's, let's actually put this right dead center and see if it's better. It could be that it's, it's better than, I, than my eyes were telling me it was. Okay, I'm going to put this in the center. Select it and hit X. Okay, let me try that again. Holding down Shift, double clicking each rectangle. Make sure we get a good selection. I can also I'm going to do a freeform selection. <laughs> Just speed this up a little bit. And just select all of these. Looks like I was a little sloppy there. Okay, looks like I got everything I need. Mirror. Select the mirror line. Okay, not too bad. Um, I'll hit OK. Um, what's nice is that this is still driven, so if I push this out, it's mirroring everything according to how I move that mirror line, which I really like. Okay. Now, there are other constraints going on. This is keeping this in the center. Um, that's a, you can see this thing right here. This little symbol is a symbol of a, um, that it's in the center. That's okay for now. Um, you could delete that on both ends and then sort of slide this a little bit more interactively where it wouldn't push this out. Um, but that's okay. Um, let's just finish this. Um, so if I hold down Shift and change my view a little bit, I can even turn off that east view. And you can see I've got the beginnings of something here. Um, I've already got something I don't love, so I'm going to select that. Um, I have my first sketch. Okay, I'm. You really do want to make sure you don't create too many sketches. So this one right here... Since that's on the same plane and I know what I want to edit, I'm just going to right-click and edit that sketch and then zoom back a little bit and say, all right, I know that this thing, um, I want it to be collinear with that. Okay. And, you know, if this needed to move, I could always try to... Yeah, it's, it's pretty constrained, so it's not going to be too easy. Okay, leave that there for now. Um, let's move into 3D. I'm going to look at this from a from an angle here. Okay, so here's my uh, my positioning. I'm going to um, since this is the north here, I think I'm going to move this elevation image um, so that this butts up against where I want it to be. So I can do that after the fact. That's okay. Good. Okay, so I what I'm trying to do is just get this to be right even with that, so I'll say negative 55 maybe. That was too far. Let me edit that one more time. Okay. So I'm just going to pull this two inches in one direction, and that seems really close. So I zoom in, just hit two on that. That's actually pretty close to what I want. All right, and you can see that even these are back a little bit. Once they're their bodies, I can I can kind of put them in order. But I I just kind of have a habit of doing it this way. All right, I'm gonna um, move over to look at my objects here. And we're gonna create our first object by selecting this pane here, and this as well. 
Okay, might as well select everything in here, all of these um, faces. Okay, and that's just because I've got that selected. Um, I'm going to do an extrude, and I'm going to pull this out. Okay, so you can see it's pulling it out in 3D. If I want to look at the front to make sure I know how far to pull it, I'll do that. I'm going to pull that out. Keep zooming in. Looks like I want to hit that darker black line there. I'll pull that out to there. It's a new body, which is good. I'll hit OK. And now under bodies, I have something called addition main body. Call it that. All right, so I can still do that roof structure as well. So let's let's do that. I'm going to turn it automatically turns your sketch off when you create a new body, but that's okay. We've got it right there. Okay, so I'm going to just finish up that sketch and do this piece. Turn east back on and just do this roof structure here. Okay, that's that'll be pretty simple. Um, let's edit that sketch. Okay, and I'm just going to do this super quick. Okay, I'm roughing that out. That's okay. Um, I'm going to hit finish sketch there, and I'll have an additional object. From here, I can select this piece, and I'm probably going to end up going in two different directions with it, which is totally okay. I'm going to take first this one, and I'm going to extrude it. I'm going to make sure new body is on, and I'm going to pull that out. And if I don't really know how far I pulled it out before, that's okay. Um, instead of a join, we want new body. Um, and I'm just going to say, instead of a distance, I'm going to say two object, and I'm going to say just bring it to there and that that will finish that off okay so i have a new body and that new body will be called um addition roof all right but that's not quite right um because i still have a new body that means that this is is going to be still a separate thing i can select um i'm going to do um i'm going to turn off the addition main body so that I do not join to it, but I want to join what I'm about to do with this other object. So just may essentially extend this out. So I'll do a press pull, which just takes that one little piece and I can just lift it. Um, I'm going to look at the front view and just sort of do one of these. Okay. So 15 inches. Let me back that up. Just that's me being really particular, but I'll do that as join. Okay, so now we have uh, the beginnings of a, a structure that we like. Um, if we want to, we can um, start working on these these panes as well. Uh, so let's do that. I'm going to select all of this, and these are we're, we're thinking of these as being flush and kind of slightly inset. Um, so they're going to be flush with the back, but they're going to come, this is going to come forward. So I'm going to add this as just one inch forward. Okay, new body is fine. Okay, then I can select each of these. Now, th these are, um, you know, these are like double hung windows, so I should probably be separating these out. Um, for a 3D model, you're going to drop into, into uh, ArcGIS online, like, I don't think that you necessarily need that level of detail. So I'm just going to select these two pieces here. And what I'll do is actually inset them a little bit. So what I want to do here is, is the other thing that I haven't shown you yet, which is how to cut objects out of other objects. 
I'm going to turn the canvases off so I can see what's going on here. You see how this is slightly in set forward, or it's it's pulled forward. But these I want to actually push in um, so that there's a little bit more kind of definition here. And we'll do the same thing with those panes as well. So what I want to do is select these two, and I'm going to do a press pull. And I'm just going to pull these in an inch. Okay. One inch. Okay, and you can see that all the panes now are like pushed forward. That's okay for now. Don't worry about that. Okay, so I'm going to push that in. I'll hit OK. And then I'm going to select each of these. And then this can be a little tedious sometimes. You have to select all of these pieces. But Okay, since this is a massing model and we're not going to have an interior space, this is going to be fine. I'm going to hit press pull and I'm going to pull these in. Um, I'll pull them in two inches. And I'll hit OK. Okay, so those are super thick mullions. Actually, I want to do one, 1. 1.5. Okay, so now if I turn this off, uh, turn off those, that sketch, I now have a window that will work with the shadows um, in the system. I can always, if I want something to exaggerate a little bit more, I can just go ahead and hit press pull um, and pull that out by another inch or something. Um, hit OK. You know, do the same thing um, at this level. Maybe pull that forward by, you know, let's say negative 0.5. Something like that. So now you have like an inch just to sort of exaggerate it, right? Okay, so that's how I would do this um, and pursue, you know, this with your canvases on so that you can kind of see as you go through. I think for now, this is a, this is a pretty good place for us to stop. Um, the key here is just to remember that you're just going to create additional... Um, additional sketches for new objects and, and turn off the body so that you don't end up joining bodies to each other if you want to keep some things separate, okay? All right, so I'll leave that uh, there. You you generally have uh, the tools that you need now with these two videos to do some really basic um, 3D modeling. Um, and just remember that this could be uh, even simpler. Just, bef just I know I promised I was going to end this, but um, if you don't have a really detailed set of drawings like this, it's really okay. So let me really quickly show you how to do that. Um, I'm going to I'm going to just you know leave that here. I'm going to start a new design just right here on the, on the side. Um, and you know if I have a footprint, let's say, I'm just going to start drawing a footprint of a house that I know from the bottom. You see how this says top is um, you know 10 meters by 14 meters. Okay, that's that's my my footprint that I've found out. Gonna zoom out a little bit here. Finish that sketch. You can see I've switched to meters. That's okay. Um, I really actually prefer to work in meters, but sometimes that's not what our, uh, our sources do. I'm just going to select that object, extrude it up, and when I'm saying, okay, how high do I want to make this? Um, maybe this is just the first floor. Um, I could do, you know, 2.7 meters for the first, um, you know, the first floor. And this body could be called floor one. Okay. This next object, I can extrude it up again. Pull that up by 2.7. And instead of a join, I'm going to call this a new body and hit OK. There we are with floor two. Okay. And right here, I, I have some idea of, you know, where some parts of the, the, um, uh, the entrance are. I can select that, create a new sketch right on it, and just draw a door, okay? This is not nearly as complicated as it may appear, okay? So the, here's a door that's 1.9 1, 1 by 1. Um, that door can be, oh, I don't know, like... Let's say it's paneled, and I'm just going to draw uh, a quick line down the middle, just as we've done before. So I can create a paneled door 
really quickly here. I'll select that object um, right here with the select tool. And let's say I want to do a quick array. Um, I, I say array, it's what they do, that's what they call it in other programs. I'm going to pull this down. And I'll move it down just like this. This array will will save. Um, I don't want it exactly like this, but I can go ahead and, and change the original one and it'll fix everything. Um, so I'm going to do that. Okay, and now for this object, I'm going to change its size and that's going to fix the bottom for each of those. Okay, so since I have this, I can hit the X key or right click and go to um, construction line. Okay, so it's not actually affecting now that it's, it's kind of acting as a guide. Um, I'm going to double click on each of these. Just the lines around them. Sorry about that. Okay, this is just a, a way to show you some really quick and dirty stuff here. Um, use the mirror tool, select the mirror line, hit OK. Okay, so now you've already got yourself a door and two different and two floors. Like if your buildings are simpler like this, it's that's totally okay. Okay, you're working maybe off of photos and you don't even have to drop the canvas in in there. You can just sort of work from there. Okay, so um, I want to emphasize that this is about a massing model you know, get the number of windows, maybe the detail in the windows isn't all that great, you know, specific, but get some basic dimensions in and do your best. Um, and, and I'm sure we'll be able to come up with a system that that makes this um, pretty, pretty simple. Um, and if you all are curious about how to do, you know, more interesting things like, um, you know, creating three dimensional objects that you array across a line or, or create a pattern across a line to do cornices and detailed things like that, I can show you that. Um, but it's really just a matter of uh, maybe creating, like for instance, if this is going to be a cornice, I'll create an object right here. I'm going to hit finish sketch. I'm going to select this object. I'm going to extrude, sorry, just the front of it like this. Okay, pull it out. 0.3 meters is fine by me. I'm going to then hit chamfer and chamfer just sort of adds a little bit more detail where you, you kind of cut that edge a little bit. Okay. And if I made a mistake, like I did here, I'm going to hit okay. The problem is I left this as, as a join. When I did this extrusion, it's, a, it's, it's connected to that. So I can go back in my history down here, hit edit feature. And instead of join, I just want a new body and I'll hit okay. So now I have this body, which is going to be like a, let's call it like a corbel, right? It's not necessarily what it is, but that's all right. Um, I'm going to select that object um, and we can create a rectangular pattern. My axis will be this line. I'm going to say my distance is going to be measured. I'm just simply going to measure to to there, and it's saying I'm going to put three of them all the way to the edge there. Um, and I can just, you know, bounce this up, and I'll say 20. It's that easy, okay? So, you know, you have to be a little bit careful about which one that you drop off the edge and where you started drawing. I was a little sloppy there, but this isn't really that hard. Okay, so once you create a 3D object like that, it's actually pretty easy to, uh, to build more of them. All right, so this time I mean it, that's the end of the tutorial. Um, there's lots of techniques. I want you all to just sort of play with this, but I've got you down for the basics of 3D modeling in Fusion.